Welcome to Real Food. Today I will be cooking uh, Japanese rice. Here it is. And um, Japanese pumpkin curry. Um, I really do like vegetarian food and vegetarian curries are particularly lovely. And I find um, Japanese curries uh, are more agreeable with me because they're not um, very hot. They are delicious, but they're just not burning your throat and not burning any other parts of your body, um, as uh, may be the case with some other spicier um, dishes um, from Thailand, for example, or India. And um, recently I've been trying to, um, to improve my skills in cooking Japanese rice. Um, the reason here is that um, you might think, oh, it's just another type of white rice but it actually isn't exactly um, another type of rice because cooking process for Japanese rice is somewhat different it does differ from other types of varieties like basmati for example or jasmine, I like jasmine rice as well and I think I found a really perfect way of doing it um, Japanese rice is generally uh, more expensive but I, I do believe that it actually tastes better and I, I actually like the texture um, of, um, how this rice feels in, in my mouth I like the actual taste um, and I like also how how it turns out in my um, in my in my uh, in my uh, pan because um, the rice can be quite difficult to cook um, but with this particular rice it actually cooks really really well without any special equipment it doesn't um, uh, um, get too sticky so the bottom of my pan um, doesn't require heavy sc uh, scraping um, for cleaning etc so uh, let's um, in order to do this right um, I need to first of all wash this rice very very thoroughly and uh, possibly something like 10 times until the water is really really clear so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to um, I'm going to soak it for 30 minutes and while it's soaking I'm going to prepare my pumpkin it is still um, pumpkin season it's the end of October so um, I'm going to try this delicious thing and this is also a Japanese curry block so it makes it very easy to prepare curry sauce and I've got coconut cream and my secret ingredient uh, a tiny apple from my own apple tree which I grew myself <laughs> this apple tree grows um, in a container so the apples are small but they are nevertheless delicious so here's my pumpkin I've cut it in half and um, another thing I'm going to try and do I'm going to try and do something with these seeds um, uh, one thing I can do with them is save some of them and actually grow my own pumpkin in, in my balcony because it does get quite hot during summertime and as long as I water it I think these seeds could produce excellent pumpkins and another thing I think some of these seeds could be dried, roasted and, um, and used in salads or eaten raw delicious uh, pumpkin seeds so I'm going to scrape all of these out um, and I'm going to then separate the seeds and um, use them separately for something useful such as growing new pumpkins and eating them in salads so here we are so I've cut one half of my pumpkin into these um, small rectangular pieces and um, I've also um, arranged these seeds here on the side um, what I'm going to do, you know, some um, recipes suggest cutting off the outer layer but I think this outer layer is actually very useful because it's got this very deep orange color and that means it's got lovely carotenoids and lycopenes and all these things are extremely useful for your eyesight so what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to cut them into smaller pieces and I'm going to pre-steam these pieces before they go into my uh, curry sauce and that will make them lovely tender and um, easy to digest um, and at the same time I'm not going to waste my um, orange skins so here we are these are my pumpkin pieces I think this might be more than I need for one portion but I'm going to steam all of it and I'm also going to save some I think when they're clean like this they, they store really well I'll put that in a plastic bag and use it later 
So I'm going to steam them gently um, till they're semi-tender. I don't want to them to be too mushy. Um, and I want them to absorb some of the juices later in my curry. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do now. So what I've done now, I've steamed my pumpkins, um, they are semi-firm, semi-tender, and I've now added one segment of my Japanese curry block, and I've added some cream, coconut cream. Um, if you don't like co coconut, you can add um, some other cream um, of your choice, um, but I really like vegetarian versions with coconut, I think it all works really well. Um, so I'm just trying to gently melt my block. And then I will allow um, my pumpkins to simmer gently in these um, in these curry spices. I might also add a little bit of um, what have I got? I've got some lemongrass. I think this will work really well. So I'll add some lemongrass here, and um, um, I'm not going to add any salt at this stage because I think the the curry block. Yeah, the curry block does have some salt in it. Maybe not enough for everyone, everyone's liking, but it is salty. So, and these pumpkins will gently, on slow heat, simmer in this um, wonderful mixture. And this will form my curry pumpkin base. I will also add my magic ingredient, my secret ingredient from my garden, my tiny apple. But I will add apple at the end because I want some crispness to um, in my apple, uh, so it will provide some balance. All of this will be cooked and, and spicy, and apple will provide some crispness and some contrast to this. So I'm just thinking whether I need to add more um, coconut, or this potentially could be enough. Um, so I'll wait for it to melt, and I will see. Um, but you know what? It already tastes delicious. So you might want to melt uh, two blocks. I don't know if you ever used um, these before. These are these have been revolutionary many years ago in Japan because in the past Japanese households would make this curry from scratch. Now they come in these lovely, I'll show you these blocks, and um, I've used just one segment, but you can use more if you want to. And these blocks, they are similar to kitchen, um, to your chicken or, or beef stock cubes, but they are a bit more, more actually sophisticated because they contain a variety of spices there. They're bigger. They also contain um, some oils and other ingredients. So they make a perfect Japanese curry, actually. So this is really good, but the technology is very, very similar. For a long time they couldn't actually have all of these spices in such block, but in the last, I don't know how many years, it has been around, so you can purchase it easily. Okay, so I've added some fresh lemongrass here, and I've just had a signal from my timer that my rice um, now had its half hour uh, soaking, and it, it can go on heat now for cooking, but I also thought um, perhaps um, it already tastes delicious. I tried one segment of my pumpkin and it's absolutely amazing. But I'm thinking to also add a little bit of spinach, because spinach then will form um, um, small sections of green. Um, it will actually, uh, in under heat, it will turn into smaller segments, and these smaller segments will form really lovely... Um, I'll just remove this. Um, insertions of green uh, which will look fantastic and I'm sure you know you know spinach is another very useful um, um, well I don't know what to call it herb it's not a herb it's a leafy green vegetable I guess we can call it um, but um, yeah I think it's good so yeah that's the idea so I'm going to mix it and I'm going to put it on heat later 
because I now need to go and start preparing my rice. But I think these segments of green uh, will actually work really well. Um, yeah, that should work. So I'm just removing those bits that look a little, a little um, distressed. So, but I think that should be enough just to spice it up, but not necessarily to spice it up, but to provide some contrast to my pumpkin and curry. So it's going to be pumpkin uh, and spi pumpkin, spinach, lemongrass, and my secret <laughs> garden ingredient. So this is what my rice looks like after soaking in water for 30 minutes. And now there's a very important stage. Okay, I'm going to now add, um, again, some fresh water. But the proportions for the, this type of Japanese rice, again, they're different to your typical, because typically you would use uh, two or three cups of water um, for each one cup of dry rice, if it's some other type of rice. But because we've been soaking this Japanese rice, and because it's a Japanese rice, we need, this is a 100 um, gram of dry rice here, so for 100 uh, gram of dry rice, we need 120 milliliters of water. So I'm going to add this 120 milliliters of water, and then it goes on heat, and it will cook for 10 minutes, and then it will steam inside, it will, it will absorb the heat and moisture for another 10 minutes. Okay, here's my rice. I'm now, I've now put it on full heat, and I'm going to bring water to boil, but then once the water is boiling, I'm going to put it on very low heat, actually, because you don't want to burn your rice or overcook it. So you simply need boiling water, and when the water is beginning to boil, it's important to switch it on very low heat, and then it cooks under that low heat for 10 minutes. Under the low heat, it's not going to burn, it's just going to cook thoroughly, and it's not going to get stuck at the bottom of your pan either, if you've done everything right so far. Um, but if you overheat it, if you if you keep it on very high heat, you can actually overcook and uh, and burn it. So that's the trick. So it, it goes boiling, but then it stays on very low heat. And then, after 10 minutes, it can stay in this warm envi environment for another 10 minutes for, for perfection. And then it can be removed, or, or it can stay in the pot, you, you can cover it with your curry, and then you can remove it to your plate. Okay, well, here's my rice. It's now on very low heat. Um, you may need to occasionally open to remove all these bubbles. So you can see that um, there's these interesting uh, shapes. It's almost like a, a crater with uh, geysers and in the middle, and there, and it, this hot steam coming through each one of those little holes. So that that creates perfect environment for 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 cooking your rice. In the meantime, while that is cooking. Um, I'll show you what I've done with my um, secret ingredient. And this is my secret ingredient. It's an apple which I grew myself in a container. Um, I've cut it into these very small pieces. These apples, they're small, but they're so fragrant and so delicious. Um, and they are so precious because after eating just one, I feel completely full. Um, and I, th I reckon it's because it grows in a really good environment where um, it's not been sprayed with poisons, pesticides, or anything else. I, I give it really good compost, so it's got the nutrients, it's got the sunlight, and, and I water it um, frequently to make sure um, the apples are, are beautiful. So um, so it's full of goodness, in good ingredients, and it captures the sun energy as well, because um, they get so red, they're like this very dark red color, these tiny apples. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm not going to cook these pieces, I'm going to use it um, at the end to sprinkle my curry with it and it will provide that lovely contrast and a bit of sweetness um, for my dish. In the meantime, going back to my rice, so you see what happens now, the water is almost, um, is generally evaporating, uh, but it's not, it's still got plenty of water in it, but gradually, well it's been cooking for five minutes now, so if in your case water evaporates completely a little sooner, then it's probably the time when you can switch the heat off completely and it can just stay in this um, in this pan and absorb all the remaining um, liquids inside the pan. 
because if you evaporate all of the water and allow for ice to start burning at the bottom, that's when things start to go wrong. You will have a, you know a layer of of burning um, rice at the bottom, and it's going to be really difficult to to clean it, and also it will affect um, what your rice um, tastes like. You don't want that um, bitter burnt um, sort of aftertaste or or hint of that in your rice. So. Um, I'm going to wait um, for another few minutes um, because it's getting to the point when you see how beautiful it is already. So water almost entirely evaporated, um, but it still, you know, has some some room for for more water to. Um, well, water doesn't evaporate there. It, some of it is evaporating, but a lot of the water is actually absorbed by your rice. So this is what's going on. Partly it's evaporating and partly it's absorbed by the rice. So and once the rice absorbed everything and there's nothing else left to evaporate and and, and, and to absorb, you know, it's it, it potentially is too late. It will start burning. So you don't want that to happen. So and what I've got, my little timer, egg timer, I've now got I've now got about two, three minutes left and you know, in another minute or so I'm just going to switch off the heat completely and my rice will be almost ready. It will remain in the pot for another 10 minutes and it will be that gorgeous, um, beautiful, you know, with beautiful texture Japanese rice uh, that melts in your mouth but it still retains some texture and there are some structures so you can chew a little bit and enjoy those flavors um, inside your mouth. So it's not going to be completely mushy and completely like um, like mashed potatoes, um, but it's going to be gentle and you'll feel the, the, the shapes and the texture of this rice. So it's absolutely amazing. I really like Japanese rice. So we're close to, um, to when I can just switch off the heat completely. Let's see what's going to look at the, what's going on here. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so, and um, I'll just get rid of that water there. So I think we are nearly there. So I've literally got like a minute or two left on my timer. So uh, what I'm going to do now, because I don't want to burn it, um, I'm going to switch it off now. And it's going to stay um, on this heat. In the meantime, I'm also heating now my um, my curry. So it's heating up. And these green leaves, they eventually should um, um, sink to um, and 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 absorb themselves and integrate themselves into into my curry. So that's that's what will happen soon. But it's on very very low heat. I don't want to overheat it again. So here we are. Here's my curry. I gently started um, rolling my pumpkins, and as you can see, uh, my pumpkins have absorbed quite a lot of my curry sauce and coconut uh, butter and cream. So, and my spinaches are now uh, fully integrated. So this is exactly what I wanted to achieve, actually. And if you can see, my curry looks fairly mild and fairly, fairly sort of um, um, yellow. It's not brown. And, and this, again, I, I wanted it to be like this, because pumpkins generally are very gentle vegetables. I want to taste um, a little bit of pumpkin in my curry, and I don't want it to be completely overpowered by the curry powders and curry spices. But um, from what I can see, it looks absolutely amazing. Yes, and my curry sauce does take, taste delicious. It does have some salt in it. You can add a little bit more, because it's not very salty. But I think it's perfect for what I'm trying to do here. And I'm going to try one of the pumpkins. Mm. Yes, the pumpkin is delicious. It is juicy. It has absorbed some of the flavors, but at the same time it retains some of its own texture and its own um, flavor. So that's exactly what I wanted from my curry. And to be honest, in a few minutes I can simply start adding this curry on top of my rice, because my rice is pretty much ready. Let me show you what my rice looks like. Um, here's my rice, look how gorgeous it is, and there's all the steam now. But hopefully you can see the texture. Well, let me let me remove my lens for a second to to just remove the steam. Okay, well that's better. So have a look at the texture. 
Do you see how beautiful the texture is? My rice is very, very fluffy at the top, and it's fully cooked, and um, it absorbed all of them, all of the liquid, uh, all of the water. So it's now ready to absorb some of the flavors from my curry. And this is what I'm going to do. And my app, my my apple ingredient is going to go on top. So um, let me just. Um, these are all my apples which I collected from my tree. Um, so I'm going to put it on this side. So this is what I'm going to do. So my curry will go gently on top. So that some of the flavors also reach my rice. I think it's just perfect amount I prepared for, for one person. Yeah. So and my pumpkin is cooked, but it's not overcooked. So it, it has got some texture. And at the same time also my spinach is perfect. It it is cooked, but it's not overcooked. So here we are. So this is my Japanese pumpkin curry on rice. And I know it's gonna taste delicious because I've already tried my pumpkins and I've um and I know what this rice is going to taste like. Another thing I often do with this rice, because I cook it without salt, I gently on completion sprinkle it with soy sauce like this. And that adds some saltiness to my rice. And um my rice also absorbs some of the flavour from my soy sauce. And um it makes it extra special and extra delicious. So here we are. And my secret apple ingredient, it goes like this on top. So I've got all these gorgeous um, ingredients um, cooked on slow heat, medium heat. And I've got some fresh apple on top. Perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this um, this dish and you can try um, preparing it yourself. Let me wish you bon appetit and I'll chat to you again soon.